live demo of the Power Editor. I want to introduce the Power Editor. This is just an introduction. So the Power Editor is a very advanced and sophisticated Facebook advertising tool that is mainly intended for agencies and you know marketing departments okay it's sophisticated so let's see custom audiences very very briefly are ways of using email mobile phone and even website visits as a way to target Facebook ads and then link post call to actions that's something new that you can create in the power editor and then anything else that I run into along the way so I'm not going to go to the power editor just yet because I want to walk you through a very quick overview of the regular Facebook ad tool, okay? And this is what most people use when they want to go beyond boosting a post. They want to do something that's a little bit more thought out and targeted, so then they'll go here. And the way this works is that you simply pick your objective, whatever your goal is. Okay, I'm just going to say page likes. Again, I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty of this because I don't want to get into the weeds here. I want to really talk mostly about the power editor. You create your ad, you you know put the links in, you see the preview, and then now we're going to get down into the audience. So now there's a new feature called custom audiences. And basically what this is, is I'm just going to click on uh, create a new custom audience. So you can now do this in the Facebook, regular Facebook ad manager tool. I believe you still have to be using Chrome. So basically what a custom audience is, it's a way for you to create your own custom target within Facebook. So it would be based on a data file custom audience. And there are a couple of different types of data files. There are emails, user IDs, phone numbers, and mobile ad IDs. Okay, so these are data types that you can upload into Facebook and then you could target those people. Okay, so for example, let's say you have an email list of people who, you know, recently subscribed to your newsletter and you really want to target them and reach them uh, to promote something. So you can take those emails, people who subscribed in the past three months or whatever your range is going to be, upload those emails and you can do a Facebook ad campaign with those people. So I'm just going to cancel out of that. The other type of custom audience you could do is you could do MailChimp custom audience and then you have a mobile app. You can go down that road if you want and then custom audience from your website. Okay, so custom audience from a website basically lets you retarget ads. So when someone goes to your website, specific pages on your website, you can display an ad to those people. Okay, you can reach those people on Facebook as well. People are more likely to take an action with your organization if they've had a recent interaction. Okay, if they've gone to an event, they signed a petition, they made a donation, whatever it might be, they're more likely to take another action within a short time frame. Someone goes to your website and then they go to Facebook and they see a reinforcement of that message. Here's uh, in terms of creating the audience. So in my case, you know, me personally, I can, uh, you know, create retargeting for uh, a Facebook boot camp that I'm working on. So I'm kind of working on this thing and I want to get it out there and promote it and then uh, visit a URL. So I can actually type in a specific URL. So I'm going to type that in. There's a whole URL in there and it says is equal to. That's one way to do it. I could say, I want the URL to equal this exact URL. I can also say, I want the URL to contain a specific keyword. Doesn't contain is equal to is not equal to. Okay, so those are all the options here. And do you want to dis display an ad? You know, is it 15 days? Is it 30 days? What, what is the, the range that you want to leverage that recency? So I'll click on Create. And I say, OK. And that's my target. And you can even exclude audiences. So you can say, I don't want people visiting this web page to see this ad. Okay. Uh, so we have, you know, custom audiences using a couple of different types, just to review data file, email, mobile device, MailChimp, if you're going to do that. And then we talked about the website. Okay, so th this is a very quick overview of these two features, which used to be only found in the Power Editor. 
okay? Now I'm gonna jump over to the power editor very quickly. This is the power editor. And again, it's intended for people who are basically professional advertisers, they're agencies and they really know what the heck they're doing. They've organized ads into a specific uh, workflow. Okay, so the top level of what you would create in a Facebook campaign would be called the campaign. And the campaign might be, let's get more engagement on this landing page. That's, that's the campaign. Ad sets allows you to do a little bit of A-B testing. So if you wanna have an ad that has one image and then another ad that has a different image, you can do that. You can see the results a little bit easier in ad sets. And then ads, of course, are ads. So ads are just Facebook ads, individual ads, and you can think of ads as going into a folder called an ad set. Okay, you can think of this as folders. And then the folders, a bunch of ad sets, will go into the campaign. Okay, so these are really, this is kind of like a folder. It's a big folder. These are all the folders that are in here. And then these are all the ads that are in the ad set folder. Uh, there is custom audiences over here. So they do have this feature too. Create an audience, custom audience, and it walks you through the same exact process. So it's really the same user interface. No reason that I can see to go to the Power Editor just to use custom audiences because it is available in the Facebook ad tool like I just demonstrated. Now, this is the area of the Power Editor that allows you to publish Facebook posts. You can schedule them. You can um, have a lot more control over how the content is uh, published and how it appears. Okay, so I'm not gonna get into the details about this, but if you create a post, you can pick a link, a photo, a video, a status, an offer, okay? So in other words, on status, pretty straightforward. It's the same that you would normally be able to do on Facebook, okay? On the Facebook page, same exact information. Video, it's pretty similar. Title, post text, and all that. Photo, you have your image, you have your post text. You can also make each of these types to be used only as an ad, okay? So you can basically you know, have an unpublished post. It will be used only as an ad, or it will be published on the page and used as an ad. Now links, you have a lot more control over how the content appears. That's what's really cool. So if you notice, photos, eh, not, really not really too many uh, pieces of new information that we can manipulate in terms of the content and how it appears on Facebook, but suddenly with links, we can do a lot. Okay, so we enter a URL, we have the post text, we have a call to action, we have a link headline, we have a display link. I mean, there's a lot of information. You could drill down into what all this means too. But what's new here is that you now have shop now, learn more, sign up, book now, download. And what I've heard is that uh, the people that are doing this, the organizations that are doing this and testing it, they're finding that there's a higher conversion rate because okay, they have a lot more control. They have this additional call to action. So this link post goes out there in the newsfeed. It has like, comment, and share, and it also says sign up. So if you're promoting an event, an event is coming up, you really want to boost attendance out of the, that event, you know, yeah, is the, is, the, is the call to action going to do that for you? No, it's an entire strategy. But if this can help a little bit to convert people on the other side, then why not try it and why not test it? When you want to publish a post, you have to select it. So when, if you create a post, it's going to give you a preview, we, and we didn't create one here, but make sure you always publish the post, all right? And then when you're done, always click Upload Changes, okay? So it's going to upload changes if you have any changes. I don't have any changes. Also, when you start using the Power Editor, you always have to click Download to Power Editor. What this does is this syncs all the data that you need to use in the Power Editor. So the last thing I'm going to leave you with is this. <clears throat> the best place to start with the Power Editor, if you're not familiar with it, or even Facebook ads, if you're not familiar with it, you want to go to facebook.com forward slash help. Okay? And then you just simply scroll down, you look at Facebook ads. They have all these really great topics in here and they're organized fairly well. Okay? Power Editor. All right, great, getting started with the Power Editor. It is gonna talk about a lot of the things I shared today. So with that, I'm gonna say thanks. I appreciate all your time.